What is up gents, Dirtbag Gaming here, the channel for casual raiders. We are doing a how-to gear guide for Sandlashed Survivor. Uh, one of the best champions, defensive champions in the game. She's definitely OG, uh, looks badass. Like a female Orakai. Um, obviously, I'm sure that's what they were going for. But we're gonna go over the skills. Um, every gear set that she would be good at, where you'd probably be using her. There's really two main, places that you're gonna be using her. Um, PVP and Clan Boss. She was kinda, I uh, made a video with her compared to Godseeker. Um, Godseeker is a Void Epic Champion. She is a um, easier champion to get, essentially, cause she's not Void. Um, but they both, they both basically do the same thing. I use her mainly for PVP. So I used her for a very defensive type uh, team. Her passive is just, insanely good uh so let's go over her skills first and then we're going to go over all the gear sets that are going to be good with our slam lash survivor so first off uh she's definitely worth uh booking out so you have an option to do either her or godseeker neary um i booked her out because i was using more for pvp and then i use my godseeker for pve so it's up to you on where you're gonna use them but she's worth to be booked out so first off uh attacks one enemy two times has a 30, 40, 50% chance of placing a provoke debuff for one turn uh, if this champion has no debuffs. Heals the chain by 50% of damage inflicted if champion is under any debuffs. So, cool, right? <laughs> so, heals the champion if they're under any debuffs and puts a provoke out if they are not under any debuffs. So, for the dragon, this is perfect. So, if you actually bring her into the Doom Tower Dragon Boss, she has a chance to provoke just like as much as the... Um, Seeker does. So if you bring Seeker and her, perfect combo to try and provoke the dragon. This one though is very, very cool. So attacks all enemies, uh, decreases the duration of all enemy buffs by one turn. Very, very good for Hydra, by the way. So Hydra just came out. She's very good for Hydra. Increase the duration of all buffs by one turn. This is the, basically the same skill as our God Seeker. Um, I don't have her out, but it's literally the same skill. So three turn cooldown. So this is very good for clan boss. Perfect for clan boss. Great for Hydra. Uh, and just good all in all in general. So if you have her enough accuracy in PvP, she'd be able to decrease any deep uh, buffs on the enemy team and increase any shield or counter attacks or any buffs that you have on your team by one turn. So she's a very, very cool, unique champion. Um, then she has a passive, which is really what makes her shine above all else. Place a 50% ally protect on all allies for two turns when any allies HP dropped below 50%. Also place a block damage buff on this champion for one turn. So <laughs> four turn cooldown, which is pretty quick, honestly, on this type of skill. But when she's on a defensive type champion, she's not gonna be um, going first. So the whole team is probably gonna get nuked. So this basically takes 50% of the damage that all your other champions are gonna be taking and putting on her, and she has a block damage buff on her at the same time. So she's not gonna be taking any damage, but she's taking 50% away of all the other damage from all the other champions. So this is a passive. Can't be denied, can't be like ignored. It just, I mean, unless you have that one dragon dude that just came out, but that is one of the best passives in the entire game. Um, I definitely have to do a full god on her because she is amazing. She's one of my, my favorite champions. Um, she also has an aura. Uh, increases defense in all battles by 25%. So she is in your PvP team. You can put her up front instead of the Seeker. Seeker's 30%, so if you have a Seeker, obviously you can put the Seeker up. But if you didn't have a Seeker, she could be your Seeker. So if you really want a defensive team, throw her and Seeker on uh, the same team and you're person just won't die it's it's hilarious so this pass is definitely one of the best passives as a defensive team uh, in the game just so good trust me worth it every single time 100 percent. every time i do a count takeover i literally see if they have a sand latch survivor and if they do i level her up and get her uh, passive up and running masteries it's more defensive type you can go a lot resistance route you can go with the um, this one decreased damage of all allies received by 5%, which is probably better than the resistance one. Um, so yeah, I'd probably go with this one. I might re-gear her just to kind of absorb a little bit more damage uh, on her with the bulwark. 
Uh, then we just went down here. This increases just the turn meter of your ally protect um, by one turn and a little bit more base damage with that. So let's go over the gear sets that we think would be really good with our sand lash survival. All right, we still always start at the top down. Uh, anytime you have like <coughs> OT, OG type builds like your life and your offense or your defense, you're probably gonna skip over all, most of this. Depends on where you're gonna use her. Clan boss, obviously you're gonna be going with lifesteal set. Lifesteal and probably speed or defense or whatever it may be. But those sets are obviously made for um, clan boss. So if you look at my build on Godseeker, I actually have a whole video of Godseeker and her with the same gear on the clan boss. So go check that out. Um, but with my build, I build a more defensive type slash PVP. So I want her with as much resistance, defense, and HP as possible. That's kind of my build, and maybe you'd be exactly the same way. So that's kind of what I'm gonna gear her towards this. So speed, if you need a little bit more speed for the clan boss build, you can do the speed set. Crit rate, you can use her, again, as a crit rate champion in the clan boss. But if you're gonna use a more PVP, you don't really need the crit rate. Same with the crit damage, you can skip over these. Accuracy is good if you really want her to land for the Dragon Boss and Doom Tower, but it's not really needed. Like obviously you can see she's a, she has 181 accuracy. So if you have a lead accuracy in Doom Tower for like let's say 70, you're up to 250 uh, accuracy in Doom Tower, just with that. So not really needed, it's, it's not the benefactor with her, it's more of a defensive type skill. So accuracy is not, not hugely with her. Um, honestly, but though, accuracy with this skill, uh, decreased duration of all, any, like this needs accuracy. I'm not sure, I have to test it out. Somebody let me know in the comments below if this needs accuracy, because um, I know anytime you, you increase the duration of your buffs, you don't need accuracy, but I think if you decrease the enemy buffs, you need accuracy. So that is actually a question. Let me know in the comments below if you, what you think, because I think it you need accuracy for that. Resistance, though, I think is going to be the number one set uh, if you're building her for a defensive type. So this one is going to be number two. Number one is going to be at the very bottom guardian set. But this one is the set that I was going with. So with the, the gloves I had on her with HP gloves, with speed and resistance and HP, ch uh, HP chest piece. Obviously you could see with defensive, um, honestly with her, sorry, you don't need speed. And why we don't need speed is because if you have the mastery of bulwark, this one, decrease the damage all eyes receive by 5%. If she's going less turns than everybody else, like really slow, but really tanky, her passive will proc with the block damage buff. So she's taking no damage, but taking 5% more damage off of everybody else. And since she's so slow, her buffs are lasting longer, essentially, because everybody else is super fast. So what that means is yeah, she's not going to be attacking as fast or, you know, going counter attack or offensive as fast, but she's surviving longer with that block damage buff because of her, her passive. So if you build her super tanky with a lot of resistance, she's not going to be debuffed. She's going to survive longer and she's going to take less damage from your other champions because she's gonna take all the damage, but not really take any damage. So that's really why you don't need her with a lot of speed. So it's probably HP and resistance in the glove that I don't have on her right now. But it was a resistant, it was, actually it was this set, whatever the set, defense and HP this set was. But resistance is great. For her, without that glove, I had 450, so probably 470, 480 with the resistance uh, as that glove. So not bad. Uh, lifesteal set, if you're using her for the clan boss, definitely will go, want to go with the lifesteal set. Uh, Fury, not the best. Frost, not bad. I just went over this with my Seeker build, but Frost is pretty hilarious as a defensive type 
uh, measure. So if you go with a lot of uh, resistance and HP in a frost set, this actually could be pretty hilarious on a go second team. Turn meter increased by 5% HP decrease, not the best. Uh, this one isn't bad. This is really mainly for Doom Tower soloing. Uh, immunity set, not really needed for her. Shield set, she only has 15,000 HP base, so not the best champion for a shield set. Relentless, again, not great because she's not a supporter type champion. She's more of like a tanky slash go second type champion. So you don't really need her to be going multiple times. Like I just said, you'd want her with as least speed as possible. So why would I put her in a relentless set? Savage, she doesn't hit too, like, she hits not bad, right? So she, anybody in a Savage set could hit really hard. If you want her to just nuke, put her in a Savage set, but not my recommendation. This is only for Scarab King. This set, she does have a AoE. So if you want to make her super, super fast, she has an AoE 3, um, which isn't bad. But that is the only, like, two chances of stun with a Provoke. So she could be a CC type champion. Two chances of stun in a stun set with a Provoke. And on a three turn cooldown, she could attack all champions and put a stun set. So it's up to you. Uh, not the best, but potential right if you want to make her a cc slash super defensive doom tower champion put her in a sunset fuck it who cares uh this is if you have unkillable teams this could be potential if you really want her to land that provoke um ignore all this this is good for eternal dragon i haven't tried her honestly in total dragon um she could be good if you made her a little bit faster than than, than i have her um because she's able to increase your buffs uh decrease their buffs so i guess if he has the eternal dragon buff on him you can decrease that um you can provoke the uh small ads and he she takes less damage and your team takes less damage you probably won't get nuked so honestly he's probably not gonna a bad champion in the stalwart set with eternal dragon eternal dragon's coming up so i'll test it out i'll make a couple more videos for you guys on that uh, this one, not bad. It's just not best for her. I would use this more for like a attacking type champion, even a bad L type champion that wants to use A2 a lot more. Ignore this. She's a defensive type champion. This one is probably one of the better sets for her because defensive type champions love HP and getting healed. So if she could put more sets of this on her, she definitely would. Uh, ignore, ignore, ignore. Again, this is kind of the same as just to get a shield. If you need the speed, definitely use the speed. This one, so you get speed, which she doesn't need. You, you get crit damage, which she doesn't need. And then she's unkillable, but she's already, un, like, she already has block damage. So probably not needed for her, honestly. This set is mainly for people that res, duchesses, siffies, siles, stuff like that. that. That's what this set's for. Probably not our sand lashed survivors then we have this one this one's probably really really good for her uh, i haven't tested this out yet but this for a defensive type type champion that could put out an ally protect boom perfect for her this obviously is good i already had that set on her uh and then this one isn't bad if you want to go with the pve route but i think this one down here the immunity set this one's funny uh, this one's good if you want the lifesteal set, but you want her to hit hard as well. So crit rate and lifesteal together is perfect. This one. Um, if I were to go again, it probably would be this one. Um, I put my best set of this on our Vergath and our um, new fat chick. Sorry, that's rude. I shouldn't say fat. This girl. Ursiga. So this set is really good. Ursiga is basically a bigger version of Sandlash Survivor. That's basically what she is. But this set is great for Seekers, for her, for Ursiga, Vergas, anybody that wants to take as much damage as possible, this set is perfect for. So I'd say this is number one. Number two would be the, um, I guess, immunity sets, lifestyle sets, if you go on PvE. Um, but this set is definitely probably number one for her, hands down. It's such a good set, that's why I have so many pieces of it. Resistance, very good defense, so I could probably actually re-gear this. 
onto her instead of these two and then these two um i just need more sets of this so i need to farm more bommel but bommel is the most annoying champion uh in the game uh and then ray i already ignore and these two are the stone skid sets so maybe the stone skid sets once the stone skid like once i have more sets of this i'll definitely new, do a new video on this this is probably going to be my cardinal video uh, but definitely we'll stay tuned for this. So guys, I appreciate it. Let me know what you thought about uh Sand Lash Survivor guide video. How do you guys have her geared? Where would I change her? Where would you change her? Uh, let me know who you want to see next because there's a ton of champions in this game now. There's so many I have to uh, do videos on. But um, if you haven't joined the DBN5, that's our main clan. DBN3 is our, our sister clan. Um, Ray is in charge of that. So join the Discord and hit him up with that. 100,000 is for cvc dbn5 so if you're over that and you want to join a cool clan let us know but guys i appreciate it good luck with everything and we'll see you in another video soon